the, the, the film captures the, the, the tenor and the atmosphere of, of an impending attack. And, 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 um, I, I mean, the only thing that I can really compare it to is, uh, is an, is, is Restrepo is another documentary that I love so much. And that, that, that going through the reality of that through, through with, with Marines and with the military, this does it on a civilian level and on a political level for what these, how these people bonded, how they, and a lot of that came down to sort of the timing of 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 the entire project can you just kind of walk us through what this thing set out to be and then what it turned into yeah yeah by the way these are fantastic this is and if you the smoke bothers you too much um, you can just do that and it blows it away um, it's for the camera this is for a camera right you know, I, I use it for even you know just to clean up because i'm clean up shit. I, yeah i'm a little uh, ocd on that so that's a huh. that's why i got those mini vacs over there um so yeah, so we, it was, it was in this room. My friend, I had a friend, Billy Smith, who produced this with me. And Billy and I, Billy's an actor. You know him. Yeah. Yeah. And I had not ever met him. I didn't know who he was. We met at the uh, CGI. He was a cop, right? Was he, he a cop? He was a cop. Yeah, he I was, met him like way back in the day. He was so good to me, man. One of my first gigs. Dude. He's yeah. a fantastic guy. Yeah. He, he he was a a, a Boston PD cop. Yeah. He was a UN police officer who posted in a few different countries, and and an actor throughout you know, and a, and a Marine. Uh, he was you know stationed out of Kuwait uh, in the first Gulf War, but always an actor. Had even even when he was you know a, 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 a cop, he would get ragged by his fellow cops for going off and doing that pansy thing he was doing or whatever. I know, I know that theater well, groups and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and we met at the at the CGI in New York when he had made a do, an, an interesting documentary about Pakistan, and I was starting to think about making documentaries a little bit. We talked, we became friends, and so then we set off to make. A couple that didn't happen. I went down to Syria a couple of times during the war and uh, met Assad and had the idea that we would do this uh, documentary about how is he still standing five years after the Arab Spring. And then we'll go talk to the Russians and the United States and the Jordanians, uh, the Lebanese. And we'll, get, we'll try to get how is how did this guy manage after everybody said he's, he was counted out, right? And I am not saying this in a celebratory way. Uh, but I was going to approach it very, we'll see what, what comes. And at first, Assad was extremely open. And uh, he, 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 you know, certainly knew how to talk to um, a Westerner who's coming over to make a documentary and say things that would um, sound very rational and so on. And bit by bit, it closed down, uh, you know, the, well, we did say you could talk to some ISIS uh, prisoners, in it, but now you can't, do, or you, or we did say you could talk to the former opposition press because with the war, there were no opposition press. Uh, we did say that you could, you know, not have a minder and go talk to whoever you want on the street. But now let's say you can't do those things. Let's see what else you can do. And I, we walked away from it. I didn't, I didn't feel that I was the guy to do that documentary, that investigative journalist one where you're told no by everything and you keep going. I wanted to see if I could do, you know, the trust one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just felt that's where I would have something of value added. And when I saw I couldn't really get it. And I don't know if, if it was him or, or his gatekeepers, but it got shut down. So then we had tried on another one about Khashoggi. And while we were in Istanbul, uh, we found out there was another filmmaker already doing it, very well financed, very good filmmaker. And our interest was that the film, a film on Khashoggi get done. And we thought that, you know, that guy's got it. So we left that one. We're kind of looking for, and I, obviously we were attracted to where maybe my access could get us in on one of the more urgent stories sure. in the world. Now we here in America hear about, um, you know, a bad phone call between our president, yeah. uh, Donald Trump, and uh, the president of Ukraine. Yeah. And, you know, you, you have more regional 
uh, experience having lived in Russia and so on, but I, I knew very little about Ukraine. And, but I, I, I had been intrigued about this, this comedic actor who, you know, played a, a, a teacher who gets suddenly a write-in candidate, becomes the president, and he's got a successful show. You know, it's the co comedic West Wing. He's Martin Sheen. Yeah. And then he runs for the real presidency and wins. Okay. It would be Martin Sheen as president. It's fucking know. wild. Yeah. Wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing either. Um, so, <laughs> Martin Sheen, I mean. Not I, just I understand. No, no, actors. No, 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 no. But, so this is long before the, the, the Russian buildup. Uh, this pre-COVID. And Billy came to me with the idea because he had contact to Zelensky. He met somebody, knew him. And I said, that might be... That might be fun, you know, getting get ourselves and all this heavy stuff and, you know, running into doors and this lighthearted, whimsical tale of this actor. So we started pursuing it and then, uh, then COVID happened and we were delayed. And over COVID, we, I got to meet President Zelensky uh, over Zoom. Um, very engaging guy. Uh, and sort of told him what I'd like to do. And it comes down to this, what kind of documentary can I offer that's gonna be, you know, have a place with all the great documentarians out there and, and doing things, why get in the way? Uh, and, and it was gonna be if I could create, I don't know, some kind of a special uh, candor or trust and, 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 and have an unguardedness of personal, not, not in a Barbara Walters sort of personal, but, you know, a vibe. Sure. And, I also noted that, you know, he, he, he spoke better English than he thought he did. Uh -huh. And I, I thought it would be great to share this guy with America and that it might be good to try to get him to speak English in this thing. Um, conversations would flow better also because I wouldn't be going through a translator. So by the time we actually got to see him, because it was not... Um, I don't think that I was motivated enough to go and spend 14 days in a hotel room to maybe see him. Right. Uh, and, and we, we just put it off till the COVID thing ended. And by the time we got there, by the time we could sort of get everything back going, it was in November 2021. And yes, the buildup had was, was in the news. It was simmering. There were about, I think, 75, 85,000 troops uh, Russian troops uh, at the border, some equipment moving. But as we know, within I don't know, a month of that, it was nearly 200,000 troops and, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. And um, so we, we went to see him in November and that did not work out because some, there was a very, very intricate, intricate um, um, operation to capture just in a sting operation to capture by name by face the guys the wagner group guys who had brought down that airliner uh, a couple of years earlier yeah. and when we got there in november just as they were going to nab them and it's all open source to read about what they did it's really interesting led by ukrainian intelligence but i think with help from our guys in the uk um and uh there was a leak and they, they, they all scattered. And there was some suspicion that it was someone in the president's office. So they were under crisis management and couldn't see us. So we went, she picked up the culture a little bit. We went out to the to Mariupol, the front lines of the, you know, the existing problems since 2014. And, um, you know, took it all in. Met with a lot of different kinds of people by the time we were able to come back and to be told that if, if you can come and stay a week, the president will find a time to see you. I said, great, let's go. That was February, 2022. Yeah. So we were, we're there and we were being patient with it. You know, we know we're confident he's going to see us. But by the time I was leaving, um, there was already the maximum travel advisory in place. You know, it was hot. Uh, in fact, they were saying it's going to happen tomorrow for about a week and a half. 
and tomorrow would come and tomorrow would go. You didn't, you didn't see it happening. I started out not believing it was going to happen. Mm. I, I was still in February, early February. I was a absolutely, I understood that, that all intel, you know, that whether you, wherever you were hearing it, <clears throat> were believing it was happening. But there were a couple of key people who knew the region really well, who, like me, felt uh, there's no upside in this for Putin. You know, you're just going to, you break it, you buy it, you're going to have, I'd gotten to know Ukraine well enough, they were going to, they were going to, they were going to fight. They, yeah. they would, they would all be willing to die before they let this happen. And and that would be true if the Russian invasion had succeeded uh, in February. And did you have a sense of that on the ground? I mean, could you feel that oh, already? Oh, a hundred percent. Right yeah, like, yeah. like nothing I'd ever, part of what we were talking about earlier, yeah. this unity thing was, they, they all had a, a, a red fun. cape on them, yeah. in my view. They were just ready to go. And within that, which is a really important thing, I have a blanket around here somewhere from the railroad. The Ukrainian railroad motto is iron and soft. And it's exactly, the, to me, the Saroyan piece. To be iron, you have to maintain your humanity. And you've got to laugh and sing. And, you know, they... It did, there's so many touching stories of how gentle warriors, but man, warriors is in block letters.